first things first, we've got this interesting article and point of debate for myself concerning Oli Gunn Solskjaer at Manchester United. This is from Sky Sports News. Yep, you're here. It says the following. Has Manchester United experiment worked two years on? Subtitle says Oli Gunnar Solskjaer took over Jose Mourinho at Old Trafford two years ago on Sunday. Of course, and United are playing Leeds on Sunday. Um, the title says the following. Could, let's read the article and then I'll give my opinions as we go along. It says Oli Gunnar Solskjaer took over Jose Mourinho two years ago today. Has experiment of appointing an experienced manager player worked? Perhaps the most telling answer to that question. 731 days, around 250 million on transfer spend and 71 league games later is that the jury is still out on X United forward. Have United progressed in this time since Jose Mourinho was sacked and Oli Gunnar Solskjaer brought in? Only Mourinho has a higher win percentage of any other four permanent Man United managers since Alex Ferguson retired in 2013. But only Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and David Moes have failed to win silverware during their time in a hot seat. And the latter was only given nine months to do so. Um, what changed under Solskjaer? As in now being... As is now being seen in the other end of the country at Tottenham Hotspur, the football uh, which predates Scottie Gunnar Solskjaer's tenure at Old Trafford is often pragmatic when it works. Mourinho has never been one to for Tiki Taka or neither was um, Louis Van Gaal who has since defended his boring style of football before him. After years of being entertained by Ferguson's winners, United supporters were never likely to be um, wedded to either of these styles in the long term. It was no surprise that it was one of the first things Solskjaer said about changing when he took over. Defensively, United have re regained some of the form of solidity uh, after making Harry Maguire the world's most expensive centre defender to join Aaron wan -Bissaka in a new look back line in the summer of 2019, conceding only three goals more than Champions League last season, but it was with the ball where the most pronounced talk about changes has been seen. I have an issue with this. Again, I'm, I, I, I'm, the jury's out for me on Solskjaer. I still think he's done a okay job considering. I think when you consider the sentiment, it depends. If it's just strictly from a footballing point of view, he's done okay. Trophy's point of view, of course, he's not won anything. But I think it's a little bit more holistic with Solskjaer. You know, he came in off the back of a very toxic tenure with Jose Mourinho, right? The Mourinho you see now at Tottenham was not the Mourinho we had at Man United for a whole bevy of reasons. Now, it could be because Mourinho was was sort of hired and was given the impression that United were going to hire us director of football. They were going to do certain things to change the way the club operated in order to make us a force again. And then when he got in, quite quickly, quickly especially when the results weren't going his way the board sort of recanted on the promises and he was kind of left alone to sort of suffer the blows from the press um, ridicule from the fans and just in general his kind of quality as a manager was sort of questioned at that time people were thinking oh, has he lost it um, is he going to be a top manager ever again bloody blah, blah 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 but as we've seen with his success at Tottenham Mourinho is obviously a good manager he can still coach to a certain level and his approach however pragmatic it may be does work whether or not it works at the top 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 level like teams like you know Real Madrid Man United well Real Madrid specifically is a good example Real Madrid Man United probably not so much because we weren't really pulling up any trees prior to him um, being hired but this kind of stature and caliber of club especially the fan expectations it's very difficult to convince Real Madrid and Man United fans that it's okay for us to park the bus against the better teams and hit them on the counter um, or take our chances that way and then when we get two goals up just shut up shop regardless if it's 60th minute or 25th minute those fan bases just aren't going to accept it so that approach doesn't really work for him but when he's at Inter when you think of Porto you think of his time now at Tottenham you think of course of his tenure at Chelsea when they didn't really have much success or whatever he gave to them was a bonus but these 10 these sort of managerial tenures for him worked because the team was basically or the club was basically set up for him to win they had a sort of underground the underdog sort of scrappy mentality the issue i have with social like at the moment is that it kind of feels like people do two of two things at the same time they both want to say give him time because he's young and doesn't have experience quote unquote but then they also want to say he's done a lot in during the time but he hasn't won any trophies so i guess two things can be right at the same time but it's a bit of a contradiction that's the thing i have with it when it comes to the signings i think he's done pretty well um in terms of the players and how they've been performing i still think overall there's some mistakes being made i don't think harry Maguire is ever the world's most expensive center back i think he's mediocre at best i think players like charkovsky um lewis dunk um the few other center backs in the premier league would say that they were probably comparable in skill set to harry Maguire, or if not 
probably a, lo- a little bit a level above. I think of a Ben White. These guys have much higher ceilings than a Harry Maguire, um, which is concerning considering that Oli got one. Oli obviously wants to play football out from the back, so signing a player like Harry Maguire doesn't really make that much sense. That being said, and then you look at Wan Bissaka, the same thing too. Excellent defender in one on one in one on one situations. Not very good in terms of defensively keeping his shape. Um, you know, obviously, of course, not really good on the ball either. So that negates the whole point of playing out for the back. He's over reliance on Luke Shaw is interesting, even though he bought Alex Tellers. Of course, that shows that maybe he does not really convince with Luke Shaw, but still, I was a bit concerned by that. And then, of course, Bruno Fernandes, the enigma, the man, the myth, the legend, has been an undeniable success at the moment. But it was also a long period of time where there was a, uh, it felt like there was an insistence to kind of play him at the, you know, at the detriment of a Pogba and really they should be playing together. So there's been some inconsistencies there. But again, overall, I think in terms of vibe, in terms of sentiment, in terms of looking forward to games, like I look forward to seeing Mane play again now before I didn't. So those things are definitely in his favour. So I think he's done a successful job in that regard. It says the following. In the 21 matches Solskjaer got saw in his first season, his counter-attack inside allowed United, sorry, his counter-attack inside allowed United to mount six times the number of uh, fast breaks that Mourinho's had in only three matches more. anti Martial and Marcus Rashford, who had started only 35 games between them in 2017-18, were now thrust front and centre. Uh, quote here, Manchester United looked like the Manchester United of 10 to 5 years ago. Gary Neville said in Sky Sports a month after Solskjaer took over following a 1-0 win at Tottenham, their fifth Premier League win in a row. They've got the counter-attack back. Um, they certainly had, but that weapon could only take them so far. 23 months on, United have picked up 21 points per game from a 19 matches where they have less of the ball. And that sort of tally, which has made, um, which could mount a serious title charge there where they have had more than 50% of possession. That figure drops to 1.7, um, one point per game and just 25 wins from 52 matches. It says the arrival of Bruno Fernandes in January was met meant to fix that issue and the results suggest it worked since then United have undefeated when they have uh, had more of the ball winning 12 and drawing 5 but against the top sides it's yet uh, it's yet providing enough um, four games against Chelsea Arsenal and Manchester United season United have only secured two points quote in the next uh, six to eight months, they have to dominate matches and dominate big games. They were told uh, Sky Sports last weekend of the board drawing City he said that would be the determining factor for Oli, which I definitely agree with that one. Um, and that was, again, that was a, probably one of the main issues I had with the City derby. You know, Man City aren't the force that they were prior. I think Pep is maybe a spent force, not because of his um, ability to coach, but I just think his style of coaching, there's only so far you can push players to play the way he wants them to play. Um, you saw it happen at Roman, sorry, you saw it happen at Barcelona, you saw it happen at Bayern Munich. It's a kind of a common theme with these sort of like managers that have this sort of, I won't say high octane, but this really detail orientated, position based, systems based way of playing. There's only so far those players, especially if you have to play that you trust so you're going to keep using the same one season to season now they've heard the same message they're not really going to be motivated or pepped but in the same way that they would in the past so it's very difficult to make that work so this is opportunity to kind of mount a serious title charge with only Liverpool being the only kind of world-class standard bearer team in the league at the moment Um, and I felt like that derby game was a good chance to take to kind of you know for us to put our flag in the ground and say hey we've arrived and we're kind of being serious about this and I felt like um, again, we didn't approach the game in a way that would be conducive of winning. Um, I think the tactics were essentially to play for a draw and hopefully nick a, uh, a win off the break, which again isn't a way that you should, no, you should be playing against the bigger sides. We should be dominating them and kind of all going blow for blow at least. So that would probably be a concern for me, I think. Continuing. He said, um, they have to stop uh, playing as a team and perform. Today was okay, but it's not just a tactic for Manchester United to win football matches in the long term or win titles. All the teams who have won titles dominate football matches. Dominating possession, being on the front foot and winning big matches. Oli hasn't got United there yet and he's been in the job two years. That's a very good um, criticism and analysis. And it kind of reminds me of that. My One of my favourite kind of derby games against Liverpool was the one under Louis van Gaal where Mata scores that kind of bicycle kick, right? Because we absolutely played them off the park. Like, we 
bossed them off the park like you know possession based football we had probably I'm gonna say something crazy like 80% possession in the first 20 minutes they didn't get a sniff of the ball we t- we kind of pulled them apart left to right and that was the one time I saw that Louis van Gaal style of football that he was trying to implement in our team the benefits of it against the smaller sides it's annoying because if they have a low block and you got the ball it's just you know you kind of end up playing out these really boring making your eyes bleed one nil victories that you know don't inspire any confidence but I think against the bigger sides when they obviously want to attack and they're leaving spaces behind that possession style of football is crucial to securing some level of victory so I, I that was one of my favorite games and I would love for that to be a common theme of United when we go play the bigger sides so that would be cool to see that being implemented but again I just don't think that's all his style he seems to prefer the sort of fast counter attacking football um, but again does he have the players to do so probably not let's continue Question of recruitment. David Gill's name does not get mentioned regularly when assessing what changed at United since Ferguson retired in 2013. But the man who replaced Chief Executive, Ed Woodward, has at times been um, more in the limelight than the four permanent managers he has worked with. This has this has not changed under the current regime, which is definitely true. And I think a lot of the reason, well, a lot of the reason why managers don't succeed at the club has to do with Ed Woodward, has to do with the Glazers, has to do with, what's his name? Um, Joe Bust, whatever that fucking guy's name is, right? There's a few other people. But essentially, they've not provided each manager with a structure that's in place that can allow them to succeed. I think Silas Ferguson was an anomaly. He was one of the, you know, like Arsene Wenger, those coaches don't come, you know, around often. The kind of managers that are able to direct the club from the top to the bottom, from like the boardroom level all the way to kind of youth team football. They don't exist nowadays. Nowadays, you have managers who are basically very adept at coaching size, you know, very adept at implementing tactical formational systems and whatever it may be, but probably aren't the most um, adept in terms of drawing up a list of potential targets or um, negotiating contracts or whatever it may be, or kind of implementing um direction for the youth team setup like these are all these things that sometimes shouldn't be put at the table of the first team coach because they have enough to deal with just coaching aside as it is and with ed woodward considering how you know how uh you know diabolical the glazers reign has been at united the amount of money they've been extracting from the club you would assume they'd want to cover their asses and just implement a system that would allow them to sort of hire and fire as they please but also provide managers who do succeed with a platform to kind of shine you know whether it's hiring a director of football whether it's changing the recruitment process whether it's identifying players of a certain profile whatever it may be like that would be the perfect approach but instead it would just hired managers giving them an open checkbook and then then signed a couple of the players that they whoever the manager wanted and then refused to sign the others then when they saw it was going wrong they suddenly pulled the funds and just fired them and then we started again and because it's led by Edward too it feels like again from the outside looking in there's no real pattern there's no real plan there's no real idea behind the coaches we hire right um there's no real link between david moyes louis van gaal Mourinho, or social apart from they all manage united there's no there's nothing to tie them in stylistically um there's nothing to tie them in philosophically wise in terms of football how they view the game they're completely different people um and unlike um, unfortunately when each of them leaves they other managers to come and sort of restructure the club to their liking whilst having players that they, they didn't sign so that is sometimes one of the big issues that kind of stares you know managers in the face it continues here says things to be things um look to be taking a turn for the better um at first with soul shark determined to build the right atmosphere the club dressing room something which had been taken for worse under Mourinho and shy shows like louis van uh, paul Popper's never ending transfer saga um do not do much to keep the narrative on getting results which is yeah somewhat true i think again that's how you have to judge social because i think we forget how quickly in football just how toxic it was at the club when Mourinho in charge he wasn't enjoying his time at the club he obviously had um some promises broken maybe he realized that it wasn't really the job for him because i do maintain Mourinho was a perfect appointment to bring in post fergie i don't think it should have ever been david moyes and i think since then maybe he kind of carried a bit of resentment with him inside about United in general he lived in the hotel he didn't want to there were lots of things that he just didn't seem like he was ever in sync with the club in general he did try to do his best of course he won us Europa League and you know was instrumental in some really fun games you know took us to the highest position in the league finished in second 
but in general it wasn't the best of time underneath under him right um and i think the atmosphere and change room change in the changing room and in the training ground was a bit bleak so a change was needed and i guess all shock was a perfect remedy for that him being a club legend and all okay next year I just kick him out so it continues um by then the arrivals of Maguire, Juan Bissaka and Fernandez to the greater less extent had appeared to be the step in the right direction Jaden Satcher could have added to the list in summer but had botched approach from United over the number one target was labeled embarrassing by Neville and quickly led to more questions about the club's approach to signings he said the Sancho thing is embarrassing it's been going on now for four months and it's embarrassing that he told the off-ball podcast and then you put the bid the bid in that gets rejected the smart club Clubs, they have the deal sorted behind the scenes the agents are working hard club officials are agreed on things when the bids goes in it gets accepted it's done Donny van de Vick, uh, Fakunda Pelstrili, Ahmad Diallo look like Soul Shark signings. Players with something to prove on their way up. The kind of players Ferguson would have admired. But house manager ensures fiascos like the Sancho saga do not happen again. Maybe much of a mystery uh, to him than anyone. Good news regarding that, though. According to the um, Transfer Window podcast by Duncan Castle, um, United are seriously looking at a director of football for like this has been the most serious we've been over you know the last few years we've got a short list of people i think five names mentioned i think i heard mark Overmars. i heard paul mitchell um i heard lewis campos who Mourinho actually recommended but we didn't want to um even interview him and a few and a couple of other people so there is a serious push for a football director coming forward and i think we need that going forward we can't be in a position where if Solskjaer does end up getting fired, we just have a manager coming in and signing whoever players he wants for the vision that he has. And then we just start again from scratch. We have to have a director of football in who can also, um, you know, uh, be consulted and maybe steer the direction as to who we do go after in terms of managerial profile, because maybe it's not the obvious. Maybe the next manager isn't just Poch or Julian Nagelsmann. Maybe it's somebody that we haven't really, rec- you know, kind of noticed who's doing good things. Who might have the, main eye DNA sort of seeping through and we haven't really paid attention to these are all things that we need to consider but again with our director of football it's very very difficult for those things to kind of um, come to any sort of fruition um, so yeah so it's a long article I'm not read the whole thing but he has done some positive again I think overall for me <clears throat> as a United fan I would say I'm still not sold on him I still think there are better coaches out there that we could get um, I think that's basically his problem. I think he might be perfect for United at this current stage, but is he perfect in terms of, is he the best coach um, out there at the moment? I don't think so. I don't think even the Oli Innes can say that. He's doing a good job. It's a similar to like, I think, if like somebody like a Mark Hughes who's been, you know, a pretty diabolical manager came into United and somehow did a good job. Um, I don't think fans will turn against him because he's Mark Hughes and he might play for City and he's a bit of a cunt. I think people will still be behind him. So I think the same goes for Solskjaer. You know, and of course, he's got the advantage of being a likable guy. So people want to root for him. They want him to win. But there's also a part of me that thinks, you know, <clears throat> a manager at this level who makes the mistakes that he does with formation, with tactics, with substitutions, with, you know, in-game management, I just don't see how that kind of manager can be able to, can be expected to win the league or the Champions League. It just doesn't happen. You don't fluke your way to those, especially the league title. I think in Champions League, you've got a chance because it's a cup competition, you know, anyone can win. Um, but I don't think you can do that with the league titles. League titles are usually given to the team that really deserves it, you know, over what, 30 plus matches, playing consistent at a certain level playing against some of the you know best teams in the country who are always challenging always pushing you there's no gimmies there's no <clears throat> there's no facing you know Celta Vigo you know at home in the Premier League every game is essentially like a FA Cup final so it's a big deal so I think winning the league just requires more from the manager it requires more it, it just requires that extra thing that I don't think Solskjaer generally does have now the issue is to counteract that would be he's obviously proved if he's given the players that he can get something out of this team and squad. They just seem to be able to play for him, play in a certain type of way. Whenever his job is in question, they pull out a flipping stellar performance. There is something about his connection with these players that seems to work. So there is a theory out there that if you do give him a blank checkbook and let him sign the players he wants in the style of Pep Guardiola, you know, he doesn't like a right back, you sign another one, he doesn't like that one, you sign another one again. Um, <clears throat> that's the only way we're going to be successful. But 
under it under his stewardship. But the issue I have at the moment is so far with the Glazers, they've shown a reluctance to spend really big and address the issues, the holes that we have. Because you know this summer I've just gone, we all kind of main eye fans earmarked. I think about five players we possibly needed, and we ended up getting what three. So there's obviously an issue there in terms of just signing and acquiring players. We don't seem to do it at the level that we need to really progress in the shortest space of time, of course. So that's the issue. So if you're going to have Solskjaer be your manager, but you're not going to let him spend how he wants to spend, and you're also not going to support him in the transfer market and we need to support, then you just have to hire a manager in who wants, who's able to work under those constraints and who's able to coach okay players into being world beaters and I think that's why people keep mentioning people like Julian Algersman or people like uh, you know of course Mauricio Pochettino because they've proved so far especially with Julian so far you know in recent times you know having been knocked out by those guys that they can get a song and dance out of players that you probably haven't never heard of right players who wouldn't command the 50 plus million dollar you know um, transfer um, fees so that is definitely something that I think the club are definitely looking at in terms of what what works going forward with with this team what works going forward and this manager after the stewardship and what makes sense in terms of making sure we get back on top because i'm not sold on this idea that Solskjaer is the guy personally but again i'm happy to be proven wrong some of his achievements so far so i made a list here number one he's got the biggest home win since um so i retired first team in history to overturn a two goal deficit away from home in champions league against paris and germain of course um won successive nine away games for the first time in the cup's history um equaled the premier league record by winning his first six matches in charge matching pepe and Ancelotti. finished either third or fourth in the competitions he managed in his first full season in charge most goals scored by united team 2013 so loads of really good achievements again none trophy wise but there's obviously some progress. There's about 24 things listed here that Solskjaer has done over his time. Um, again, whether he's given the time to do so, I don't think that will happen. I think the guys will get too twitchy, especially if we end up finishing outside the top four this season, even though there's a chance we can win the league. But let's see going forward. Um, again, if I had to rate it from as like a grade, I'd say he's probably got a B plus, if not a C. Um, it'll be cool to see us kick on. And again, with the title race being wide open, with Liverpool being the only real, you know, stellar team in the league, there's definitely an opportunity for someone to come in and challenge them and push them all the way until the end at least. And who knows, maybe, you know, squeezing right at the end there with a couple points. It could be done. It could be done. But again, if you're a United fan, let me know. Do you um, do you think Solskjaer's first two years in the cup have been successful? Um, do you think he should be given more time? Do you think trophies are everything? Um, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts.